Got a question here from at Colin for Congress over on Twitter. Colin, good on you, sir. Running for Congress and all that. I don't know if you're actually running for Congress or if this is some sort of a some sort of an imaginary parody run at Congress. Either way, I wish you good luck in either winning or pretending to win or pretending to lose, depending on what your goal is for your congressional seat, wherever it is and whatever your platform may be, because you are almost certainly very, very rad. Colin asks, why are there so many distros based on Debian? And if Debian is so good, then why not just use Debian? Does Debian leave out the bells and whistles that others slap on and just call it a distro? Can I not web and write and music on Debian? <laughs> if I prick Debian, doth Debian not bleed? It's a good question. It's a very, very good question because the reality is Debian is an amazing distribution of Linux all by itself. Just pure, plain, vanilla Debian. But man, there are so many distros based on Debian. It's it's crazy because you think about like those those core rock, bedrock distributions, you know, that so many end up getting based on. You know, there's quite a few based on Arch. And uh, there's a couple of variants based on Fedora. And I guess there's quite a few based on OpenSUSE, but nobody uses them. I mean, uh, I mean, like we had SUSE Studio for a long time, and that gave us like 40,000 different SUSE-based distros, technically. But people didn't even know they existed. But Debian, man, Debian is this like granddaddy figure has created so many children. Debian's offspring fill the land it is amazing here let's look actually let's just do an exercise here i thought about doing this just right before i started so i don't know how this is going to work out but if you go to distrowatch.com and let's let's scroll down and look at the quote unquote top 10 distributions over the over the last six months i mean a good number are debian because we got number six is just straight up debian number five is elementary which is based on ubuntu <laughs> which is based on Debian. Number four is Mont Ubuntu, which is based on Debian. Mint, and oh, oh my heavens. And you scroll down even further, and it just goes on and on. And sure, there's quite a few that are that are really unique distributions, really created off out of their own. And there's some that are kind of Slackware-derived, and there's quite a few Arch-derived ones. And there are a couple of of Red Hat slash Fedora at some point derived distributions. And yes, I know Red Hat Enterprise Linux built on top of, top of Fedora. I'm talking olden days here. I'm talking olden days here before the naming changes happened. But yeah, why? Why not just Debian? And I think I think the, the reality is well, <clears throat> what answers that is when you look at what Debian is and what Debian is truly amazing at. It is a stellar bedrock it is a foundation upon which you can build so much and they did such a good job in my mind of of making something that's great to build upon it is in and in and of itself all by itself a fantastic distribution for you know desktops and servers and blah 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 it's fantastic right out of the gate but but it was it's so flexible it's very stable when you want it and unstable when you want that too. And it's been consistent. It's been easy for the downstream projects like Ubuntu to say, I'm going to base myself on Debian because not only, you know, is there some sort of momentum within the packaging formats and, and all that sort of thing, but, and I like where they are, but they've been consistent and that consistency makes it so much easier to build something on top of. Right. I mean, that is absolutely fantastic for for things like Ubuntu and Elementary and Mint. I mean, they really they they succeed in part because of the great foundation they chose to use. And, and I think Debian is a great, great in that regard. Now, that's not to say that, like, for instance, uh, OpenSUSE or Fedora um, or Arch or many other uh, distributions that are kind of more bedrocky aren't fantastic as well. I mean, I obviously have a, a big soft spot in my heart for OpenSUSE, even though I don't use it anymore. Uh, I used to be on the, the board for that one. 
Uh, and I mean, there's they're great distributions. Fedora, the current the current release of Fedora is incredible. If you haven't tried it out, honestly, it's worth spinning up and in just a VM and go to the Fedora Projects website. It's it's worth checking out. And again, yeah, I'm I don't think I'm using Fedora anywhere currently. Like I don't think I even have a dual boot setup at this moment, but I would consider it. It's really, really good and it's a great foundation to build upon. But, you know, Debian is the community run one and Fedora, while it has, it's very community centric, is you know, Red Hat. And, and so people, I think people kind of view that as kind of its own separate thing. And so I think that's a lot of why this happened. I mean, OpenSUSE never really caught on as a distro for things to be based upon. I think it's totally doable and totally viable. I think it's a, a reasonable distribution to choose as like your your core bedrock. They, the team did a lot of good work there in that regard. The kind of the architectural side of things is, is solid. I mean, it's it's worth, worth basing something on. Um, uh, I have issues with OpenSUSE. I tell you, though, if I made my own distribution based on OpenSUSE, and I have <laughs> in, in ye old in Sousa Studio days, <laughs> um, uh, you get rid of Yast. Uh, do yourself a favor. Just don't have Yast around. You, you don't have to completely uninstall it and remove every weird package it depends on, which is a lot, and it can get really complicated. But uh, just, just remove it from every menu. Just do yourself that favor. Open SUSE goes from goes from oh why am I using this to hey this is a nice distribution as soon as you get rid of Yast what were we talking about Debian that's right um, so yeah tune in next week when we're talking about my complaints about Yast for five hours Colin that is why Deb uh, Debian's fantastic uh, I love Debian you know like Pure OS is based on Debian. Um, so many things are based on Debian and the things that aren't based on Debian are based on Ubuntu, which is based on Debian. I mean, that's just kind of how things roll around here lately. <laughs> that said, what is fascinating, if you if you watch the trends, um, and I, I kind of almost wish I had this, a slide up for this or something, but uh, if you watch the trends, Linux distributions tend to not stay the king for more than about five years. Uh, about every five years or so, there's some sort of a shakeup. And it goes from uh, Fedora Red Hat was king before Ubuntu was king. And now, I, honestly, I think that Ubuntu is not, not quite the king it was. Um, I, I think a couple other things have swooped in, which is a whole different topic. And actually, I'd love to get someone on to talk about that sometime soon, about, about the current changing landscape and demographics of Linux usage. But uh, yeah, so I wouldn't expect that to stay that way forever um, in large part because changes are inevitable and a lot of distributions that are Debian based are Ubuntu based and Ubuntu sits on top of Debian and if the downstream of Ubuntu distributions um, uh, start having issues with the changes in direction with Ubuntu or technological architectural changes with Ubuntu uh, they'll end up switching over to probably just pure Debian which won't be a terribly painful move um, but you'll see things just based, based more on Debian. Yeah, yeah, that's the future. We're going to be based on Debian for a long, long time. As I'm sitting here thinking about it, I'm like, I want to make the case for, you know, it moves a lot. But it, the King Linux distribution, as in terms of, of user usage, does shift a lot. But I don't know. I, I for, the, for quite some time, I don't see a landscape where the dominant, 10 Linux distributions where at least half of them, if not more, are based on Debian in some way. I think that's just going to be the case. It's just such a great build platform to build from. Uh, and this, speaking of things that can build things, Lulzbot 3D printers help sponsor this show. They help make this show possible. I'm the voice of their phone tree. So if you need a 3D printer, that's actually happening a lot lately. Uh, there's, 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 four companies now where if you call them I talk to you over the phone I never thought that'd be something that I do even once like when I was a kid you know I had answering machines at my house and I thought it was cool that I could record like the house message you know that was neat but that was about as far as I saw that going <laughs> phone tree systems yeah and there's easter eggs and all two of them yeah. Anyway, Lulzbot 3D printers are awesome. They're the best 3D printers in the land. When you gaze out the horizon and you think, hmm, I could 3D print some things and put them out there on that said horizon, you want to do it with a Lulzbot printer. Uh, go check them out. They love open source. They love open source hardware and they love free software. 
Paulsbot.com. Go to Lunduke.com for more information about this show, about what we do here, what I do here, what you do here. Uh, you can go to my BBS there. I've got a, I've got a BBS running, an old time BBS. A lot of you want young whippersnappers, maybe not have. <laughs> I don't know how to talk anymore. <laughs> a lot of you young whippersnappers have never been on a BBS. Get on a BBS at least a couple of times. Get an ANSI color terminal Telnet client. Uh, there's a couple of options over on Lunduke.com and Telnet into BBS.Lunduke.com. Play around a little bit. You don't have to come back. Just do it once so you know what it's like. It's basically there as an homage to early 90s DOS-based BBSing the king uh and of course if you want to get this show the best possible way the video version of this show with no drmings no mp and your mp4s no drmings at all all open source software unlike that youtube thing with all that closed javascriptiness yuck go to lbry.com it's fantastic i'll see you guys later